Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to show you how to make Alice in Wonderland characters for a Christmas tree using cotton and cheap small dolls. I'll begin with the main character of the fairy tale, Alice. This one is the easiest to make. Here I'll be using a cheap little doll as a base. First I'm getting rid of the hair. I'm removing the original face using nail polish remover and after that I'm priming the face and the hands with an acrylic primer. After the primer has dried, I'm mixing acrylic paints to get a skin color and painting the doll's face and hands. I'm doing this so that the face doesn't look like plastic. I'm going to make more Alice in Wonderland characters out of different materials and I'd like them all to look like a set, so I'll save this premixed paint for later usage. After the base has dried, I'll begin drawing the face. First, I'm outlining the eyes and the eyebrows with a brown colored pencil, then I'm drawing the whites of the eyes. I'm painting the irises of the eyes in blue. And finally I'm drawing the pupils and outlining the eyes and the eyebrows with a dark brown paint using a thin brush. I'm tinting the mouth with terracotta pink, browning the cheeks a little with the same paint. And I'm painting the teeth white. After the paint has dried, I'm sealing everything using a matte acrylic varnish. I'm going to make Alice falling down a rabbit hole and I want to make the doll's legs looking more natural. Now they are more like hatches. People don't hold legs like so when falling. Therefore, I'm heating the doll's legs over a candle flame and trying to bend the feet down a bit. I'm heating the plastic and then fixing it in my hands in the desired position until it cools down. The main thing here is not to overdo it and not to melt the plastic. Next, I'm making a suspension loop. I'm hanging Alice on a ribbon so that the body hangs horizontally and hot gluing it to the doll. Then it's time to use cotton. First I'm hot gluing a little of cotton wool over the head, it's going to be the base for her hair. And then I'm wrapping the whole figure in a very thin layer of cotton wool, leaving only the head and the arms open and covering it with white glue. I'm also adjusting the shape of the legs slightly, adding cotton wool to the toys to make them look like there are shoes on them and also adding more cotton to the calves to make them look more like child legs. I'm also covering with glue the cotton over the head and adding another piece of cotton here, making the base for the hair. They will fly up as it should when falling. After that I'm hanging the ornament to dry well, here I'm using a kitchen utensils holder from the Dollar Tree. Then I'm going to be painting the legs, it's easier to do it now before I've attached skirts. First I'm painting the stockings in ivory. And then I'm painting stripes on the stockings using a thin brush. And of course I'm drawing the shoes on the feet. Then I've decided that the suspension ribbon was too thick, I would like the suspension to be less visible, so I'm cutting off the ribbon and replacing it with a thin thread. Now I'm going to be making a dress. I'm making puffy sleeves out of cotton wool. And 
and I'm also making a collar. I'm shaping it right in my hands. It's much easier though to cut it out of a cotton pad, somehow I've forgotten about that, and I'm attaching it onto the figurine. To make a skirt, I'm separating a thin, almost transparent layer of cotton wool from a roll and coating it well with glue on a plastic board. I'm carefully taking it off the board and attaching it to the figurine. This one is the first of many skirts, so I'm shaping it to sit just over the figure. I'm going to make several skirt layers in order to get a full dress with petticoats flying up in the flight. To make the edge of the skirts even, after I've taken the cotton wool sheet off the board, I'm cutting the edge with scissors. Then I'm making folds and attaching the finished skirt to the figurine. I'm trying to make the skirts fluffy and eerie from above and stuck to the legs from below as it should be when somebody falls down. I've made five or six skirt layers so that the dress came out very fluffy. I'm waiting for each skirt to dry and only then proceed to the next one, so as not to crumple the previous layer. I'm making the last layer especially raised up. By the way, you can also make lace panties for Alice here. Next I'm going to do the hair. I'm coating a thin layer of cotton wool with white glue as I did when making skirts and then I'm gathering the cotton sheet to the middle using some sharp tool like a thick needle or a toothpick making a kind of crinkled texture. I'm taking off the finished crinkled sheet carefully covering the hair base with glue and attaching the crinkled cotton to it. I'm smoothing everything with a brush and then finally shaping the cotton on the head with the same tool, making kind of hair locks. I'm also adding small pieces of cotton here and there to make the hair look more realistic. I'm waiting until it's dry and coating all the figuring with another layer of white glue. This will give the ornament more rigidity and also will make the surface of the cotton wool smoother. If you prefer to have ornaments that are soft to the touch, like vintage cotton ornaments are, then you can skip this step. Finally, I'm painting the dress. I'm making it light blue. I'm leaving the petticoats snowy white as they are. Alice is going to be blonde, of course, so I'm mixing a beige color, more or less looking like a blonde shade, and I'm painting the hair. To make the dress look more detailed, I'm painting the color yellow. And I'm also adding a yellow trim on the sleeves and along the hem of the upper skirt. And finally I'm adding a ribbon on her hair, I'm making a thin strip out of cotton and attaching it to the girl's hair. I'm also making a small bow here. <laughs> and after it's dry I'm painting it black. I really love how Alice has turned out, this is just how I imagine her, a charming little girl curiously looking at the walls of the rabbit hole while she's falling down. I think I've managed to convey the dynamics of the flight, I haven't made a white apron, which she's wearing usually because the skirts look so nice as they are, and I thought that the apron would be too much. Well, and the best thing is that this ornament is quite easy to make because in fact you only need to dress a doll into a cotton dress and pose here. I think this is much easier than making the body and everything all by yourself.
The second doll and the second character of the tale is the Red Queen. This doll is the same as the first one, only having another hairstyle. I'm also pulling out all of her hair. I'm washing off the face with a nail polish remover just as I did for Alice. Here I've wanted to shape the doll's fingers into fists and of course leave the index finger out. Well, you remember that pose off with the heads, yeah? Here I've not succeeded as well as with Alice. The fingers are very thin and the wore are melting easily over the flame and at the same time they wouldn't bend well. <laughs> I'm also hitting one hand and bending it at the elbow to make the pose kind of more natural. Then I'm priming and painting the face and hands using skin color, as in the first case. I'm also drawing the face with a brown pencil, here I want to keep it simple, so I'm making the queen's eyes closed, and I'm drawing the eyelashes, angry eyebrows and shadows on the eyelids. Then I'm painting all this using brown paint. I'm tinting lips and teeth and I'm adding a frowning bridge on the nose. After that I'm sealing everything with the varnish. I'm hot gluing the head to hold hotly pulled up and also attaching a loop for hanging to the head. And then I'm hot gluing cotton wool over the head to make the base for hair. I'm coating the hair with white glue and I'm also wrapping the entire body in a thin layer of cotton wool except for the arms and the head. And I'm leaving the ornament to dry. After the base has dried, I'm building up a skirt base for the queen to have it more voluminous. Then I'm shaping puffy sleeves. And since the queen should be quite fatty, I'm adding more cotton to her tummy and breasts. Then I'm going to be making skirts. Here I'm doing exactly the same as I did for Alice. Lots of layers of frills, which I'm gradually adding to the skirts. The only difference is that here I already have the base, and therefore I'm adding very short frills at the bottom and longer ones on the sides to get a fluffy multi-layered skirt. By the way, you can make a Christmas princess ornament in a chic fluffy dress the same way. I'm attaching the top skirt over the frills, it's open a little at the front, showing the petticoats underneath. You can shape the folds on the skirt using a toothpick or a large needle, it's very easy to shape cotton wool while it's still wet, and you can give it the desired shape, smooth it, or on the contrary, make extra folds if needed. I'm waiting until it dries and then I'm covering the upper skirt with white glue to make it more rigid. And after drying, I'm painting the skirt red. Here I'm going to be painting everything in several steps. It is much easier and I'm less likely to stain any another layer when painting. I'm making another upper skirt, here I'm gathering the edges in the front and raising them up to the waist and at the back I'm making beautiful folds and also raising the edge up to the waist. It makes a lush, beautifully draped skirt. I can't guarantee that the design of such a skirt was like this in Victorian times, here I'm just making it as I imagine it. I'm painting the second upper skirt yellow.
Then I'm coating a small piece of cotton wool with glue. You can also use a cotton pad for making this and cotton it with scissors in a zigzag manner. These will be the cuffs. I'm attaching them to the sleeves and wrapping them around the wrists to get beautiful lace cuffs. I'm cutting a thin layer of cotton wool into strips and using them to make a belt and a ribbon around the neck. Then I'm going to do the hair. I'm coating a thin, almost transparent layer of cotton wool with glue on the board and gathering the cotton wool to the center, making small folds with a needle. I'm carefully taking this piece of crinkled cotton wool off the board and placing it on the head covered with glue. Finally, I'm correcting the shape of the hair over the head. It's okay if one piece doesn't, doesn't cover the whole head, such a texture can be assembled from several pieces easily, the edges will not be visible at all in the end. After drying, I'm painting the hair in auburn color. I'm drawing red stripes on the sleeves with a thin brush. And then I'm painting black the gaps between them to get the red and black striped sleeves. And I'm painting over the bodies of the dress in black. Here, by the way, it was better to paint the dress before attaching the ribbon on the neck. It would be so much easier to paint then. I'm making the belt red. And I'm also drawing small hearts over the hem of the top skirt. I'm painting the ribbon around the neck blue. I would keep all the cloth in red, yellow and black, but I'm making this set of ornaments, as I said before, and as I'll have blue in other ornaments, I want to have something blue in her cloth as well. Then I'm going to make a lush royal color. To do this, I'm cutting a thin layer of cotton wool into ribbons about half a centimeter wide. I'm coating the queen's neck with glue and attaching the ribbons, making many, many loops around the neck. It's not so easy to make it neat, so if you don't want to bother, make a color of different design, for example, a standing color out of a cotton pad. Finally, I'm making a heart out of cotton wool. This is the Queen of Hearts, after all. I'm making it in a silicone mold to have it very neat, but you can also shape it by hand. I'm painting the finished heart in red and after drying, I'm hot gluing it to the ribbon on the neck. But the Queen lacks sparkle. Therefore, I'm adding bronze to the royal dress using contour paint. I'm adding stripes and an edging to the red skirt. I'm circling the hearts on the yellow skirt with browns. I'm adding patterns to the belt and the neck ribbon. And I'm also using a pattern I've seen on the classic illustration for Alice in Wonderland to the top skirt. Finally, the most important thing, the crown, of course. I've got a metal one here, I've bought it on AliExpress and have already used it for a feather swan. I'll leave a link in the description box for these crowns, they're very nice. But you can also make a cardboard crown and paint it in gold. 
Isn't it funny how different these two dolls, which were identical in shape, turned out to be? One is a little girl and the other one is an angry queen. I like that because I've made the queen quite a juicy woman, that chubby cheeks now look not childish but fatty. Although, of course, in the original illustrations for the fairy tale, the queen is much less cute. This is my first experience of a negative character. This was the first two of Alice in Wonderland characters. I'm going to show more to you, so keep tuned. I'll post more videos about them soon. Let me know what you think of the project down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye!